This evening's guest <clears throat> is a uh, registered physical therapist. Uh, he did his undergraduate work at uh, Cornell University and uh, he did his graduate work in physical therapy at the University of Maryland. He specializes in chronic pain, migraines, uh, and, uh, and uh, muscle tension. Um, he treats musicians, professional and otherwise, uh, in matters of, uh, of, of performance injury and, and chronic pain. He helps people, he watches them and then, and then helps them sort out their issues. Um, he, uh, he treats string players, percussion players, brass, keyboard, and woodwind musicians, and uh, he helps them identify where the problems originate and, un and then uh, sort of solve them from there. Uh, he began as a student player, graduated as a, in, you know, to be a professional musician, and then uh, became a physical therapist. So he gets to combine his passions and his profession, which is great. So let's hear from him and see him work with some real people. This is David Shulman. Thank you. Thank you all. Good evening. Um, I, uh, again, as he said, went to... Uh, college uh, when I was uh, out to figure out where I wanted to go and came to that famous crossroads, uh, do music or do something else. I took a right and I kind of went around and did some other things, uh, went graduated college, found physical therapy, and was interested in headaches and TMJ and chronic pain and all that. And everything was bouncing along pretty well doing that. And one day a gentleman came in who happened to be a BSO player, Baltimore Symphony Orchestra player. Uh, he didn't have a music-related injury at all. He had a knee problem. So uh, while taking care of him, he began to describe uh, other musicians and their difficulties. And I really hadn't met many musicians in my life that really had that many problems. So I found it interesting, and I did well with him. So he went back to the BSO and recommended one of his uh, band members to come because they had a shoulder problem or a foot problem or whatever. And so I took care of them. They were happy. They sent somebody else. and. Uh, some of these people also had students, and the students were beginning to have problems as well. So that was another interesting point. So I began realizing that not only did professionals have this from working at, but the students did as well, and decided to learn more about this. And I learned as much from the musicians as they learned from me, uh, because after all, I was a woodwind guy, and you know what did I know about percussion or piano, et cetera. So, uh, between us all, we, uh, we got me to the point where I really began working and focusing on musicians a lot. So that right turn that I made has brought me all the way back through here, and my passions for music are still there. I have music pumping all day in my office. Uh, although I'm not pay playing professionally anymore, what I'm doing is I'm working side by side with you instead of on the bandstand. I'm working side by side with you as musicians to help you have long, productive lives where you play less injured or not injured at all, learn to play efficiently, learn to play uh, with smarts as opposed to long pay, play beats uh, smart play. I gave everybody here one of these things, hopefully you have one, which has got my sort of my salient points, my take home points. Uh, unfortunately, we only have 50 minutes here today, so there's a lot to cover and not a whole lot of time. But before I do that, can I just hear out from a few people, what do you expect to get from this lecture tonight? Anybody? Nobody? Oh. Uh, some ideas to protect our ears or our, our bodies from getting injured from mm -hmm. playing in, with music? Yeah, the, the, you, you know, you're all, you're all you know, professional athletes, basically. And we'll get into... <laughs> Which way am I going here? Oh, I hate these things. <laughs> Got it. OK, anybody else? Go ahead, yes, sir. Just shout it out. Um, just how like our body is like a big muscle, how we need to take care of it basically through like doing physical workout or doing like certain stresses, warming mm -hmm. up and all that other good stuff. Yep. Yeah. Well, we'll talk some about that too. That's good. Yeah. The whole thing is designed to try to help you understand what it is you're doing, why you're doing it, and 
help to eliminate uh, future problems. All right, so music is not a contact sport, but you are athletes. World-class athletes, world-class musicians are world-class athletes. You're, uh, athletes are often explosive, musicians are repetitive. You're small muscle, you do everything in a contained way, but it's very, very, very repetitive over an extended period of time. And just a couple of examples. Here's a musician warming up. Here's an athlete warming up. Here's a musician performing. Here's an athlete performing. And the athlete cooling down, and the musician cooling down. Huge difference between them. So, when this guy, come on, when that guy gets through playing, where does he go? He goes down to the practice room. He goes down and he has a physical therapist, a trainer, etc., working on him. Where does this guy go? He packs up his case and goes home, exactly. Even though his arm is killing him, his, his thumb is killing him, doesn't matter. He has no support team, and often he has no idea what to do. Part of the problem is posture. Part of it is overworking. Um, like this guy here, real quick. Um, you know, if he just did this for five minutes, he's a teacher. So if he does this for five minutes a day, no major malfunction. But uh, you know, he's taller than this kid, he's out of the way, he drops the uh, flute so he doesn't hit him in the back of the head. Meanwhile, he's stretching the heck out of these muscles here, contracting these, and he's uh, maintaining this position for, you know, uh, potentially hours at a time. Uh, again, uh, at the beginning, won't matter, but over years of doing this, it will. Uh, here we have a trumpet player doing the same thing. He's taller, he's trying to get out of the way of this kid. He's cocked a little bit to the side. He's a little depressed, closing off his, uh, uh, his wind. Uh, the kid is in this turned position. I don't know what he's doing. You know, he, he's looking this way, the music this way. But you know, I mean, it's really not a good position for either one of them to be in. And if you don't learn from the beginning to have good posture, to have good presence, what's going to happen is, is he's just going to be doing these uh, crummy postures for the rest of his life until he starts breaking down, because you can't keep this up for an extended period of time. Why is this? These are muscles. Muscles, a warm muscle is a happy muscle. You see that on there. Mu warm muscles and happy muscles are elongated. They're relaxed. The tendons that sit uh, attaching it to the bone are relaxed. There's no tension on it. However, when you do things over and over and over again, the muscles get overused and you begin to have contracted tight muscles. This muscle sits on its own blood supply and sits on its own nerve supply, causing more tension, causing more pain, uh, causing the muscle to get cold and contracted and tight, and it pulls on the tendon. So anybody here who's had a tendonitis understands that this constant pulling of the muscle, it's like if you pull on your hair, if you pull on it long enough, what's gonna happen is where it attaches to the scalp is gonna get inflamed and irritated. That's exactly what this tendon's doing. They're getting inflamed and irritated. And if you take the pressure off of that muscle, what happens is, is you have immediate, immediate reduction of uh, the, uh, the, the tendonitis pain. So you want to work at trying not to shorten the muscle as much as possible. Then you run here, and if you don't do that, what, what happens here is you have tightness. So the muscles get very tight at first. It's the first red flag that nobody even notices. Everybody's got tightness. So you roll your head around, you shift your shoulder, and that essentially makes it, quote, go away. It really doesn't, because you have to keep doing it over and over again. So that shows that there really isn't any um, fix to this, but you keep doing it anyway. But as, when the tightness continues over an extended period of time due to overuse, you end up with fatigue. Now you can't play as long as you could. You have to kind of shake it out, you know, take a rest, walk away, come back. That still doesn't get you much of a red flag. Then you start getting into pain. Pain sometimes gets your attention, but you still don't know what to do about it. So there are a number of things that people do, and I'll show you that in a minute. But if the pain goes on long enough and hard enough, you end up not being able to play. And I'll bet you a lot of people here know somebody that's had to quit at the age of 18, 19, 20, 22 because they can't function anymore. They tried and it just didn't work. Interesting. 
This was a uh, study that was done at the University of Illinois. Four years in a row, seniors from high school were taken to uh, the conservatory and given a pain um, um, questionnaire. String players, keyboards, brass players, and singers, by the way, 84 to 80%, 7% of them were injured every year for four years. So it wasn't like they had a bad year one year, except for the poor percussionists, 100% every year. And I'm sure everybody knows the percussionist here with a beat up arm and beat up uh, shoulders, et cetera. Uh, now, Indiana uh, University did o occupational therapy research. 89% of the musicians had pain. Likelihood of having to stop Simon sometime in your career, 70%. That is an incredible number. The Bassoonist International, 78%. <coughs> Arms risk of just the left hand alone, 54%. So you can see just how beat up musicians get at such an early age. This is cautionary for you folks. Be careful. And we'll talk about that. So what do we do about this? What do you guys do about this? Only 31% went to somebody to get help. Just 31%, that's it. Everybody else tried to do it on their own. Rest, which makes sense. You want to sort of back off from what you're doing. And I'm sure anybody here who has had any kind of discomfort, any pain, has sort of backed off. Reduce their playing time. Smart to do. Because you're probably playing nine hours a day, so you reduced it to seven. Smart. Um, stretching, 53%. At least that's a physical thing. You're trying to undo it. You're trying to back off what uh, was happening. NSAIDs, anti-inflammatories, Motrin, Aleve, Aspirin, that sort of thing. 37%. Uh, exercise, 29%. My problem with exercise is you're already exercised. If you're to the point where you're hurting, you're playing the piano or the drums or the guitar or the um, <clears throat> a violin are exercise enough. You don't need to keep exercising because you're not weak in the sense of being physically weak, you have no gas in your tank anymore. Your muscles are exhausted. That's why you can't function the way you did. That's why you can't play the riffs that you could. You're, you've got less gas in the tank and they're flagging. 27% uh, used ice, 11% used heat. And actually all the studies show that heat is the best thing for muscle, not ice. Ice is good for blown up joint. It's not that good for muscle. So moist heat for 20 minutes is the best thing you can do. All right, now this goes into the practicing thing. Everybody practices and everybody practices a lot. Okay, you have a passage you wanna learn. You have first play, second play, third play. How many here think the best you can do is the first play? Everybody? Okay, how about second? Okay, how about the third time around? Think that's the best? Okay, best is the second. By the time you get to the third play, your mind's wandering already, and you just, it's hard to focus. So if the second play is the best, why are you playing it nine more times? All you're doing is either accenting bad habits, or you're just wearing yourself out again. Best way to do it is do the second play and stop. Or, what's behind curtain number two? You play for 20 minutes, rest for five. I know people here are playing an hour at a time, an hour and a half before they get tired. Don't do that. Play 20 minutes. Of, this is all research-based, by the way. I'm not just saying this because it's an interesting thing to say. That's one way to do it. You can also play for 20 and sing for five because the brain, MRI studies at Hopkins uh, by a Dr. Charles Lim were shown that the brain lit up just the same whether you were playing it or whether, you, or whether you were singing it. So why beat yourself up any more than you have to if learning the rep can be done just by singing it? So play for 20, sing for five, or play for 15 and do airplay, sing for five and then rest for five. You're still getting the, uh, the uh, information you want in your head uh, you all know how to play the instrument, so it's the idea of learning what you can learn in the safest, easiest, less stressful way as possible. I mean, you can sing in the car on the way to, uh, you know, on a, st a stoplight reading your sheet music. So there are lots of ways to get the time in without having to beat yourself up. And airplay can also be not just singing, playing lightly on the instrument without actually playing full out. 
that saves your chops if you're a br brass player, and it saves your hands and arms if you're playing virtually any other instrument. Um, this is uh, kind of a made-up thing, it, it, just time and ability. When you first began, your time and ability was about zero. You could play like a minute on the instrument or two minutes and your, you know, your face fell off or your arms fell off. But as time went on, your ability increased and your time in play uh, increased and you went along and then you, you got fatigued and it started to drop. Then you did whatever you do, rest, anti-inflammatory, uh, heat, ice, muscling through, whatever it is. And then you kind of came back and then it went down and it came back and then it went down further and you got to real trouble. You may have sought medical assistance at that time, but you kept pushing through because, you know, your responsibility is to yourselves. Your responsibility is to the um, band members and the playing people uh, and the paying people out in the audience. And then it just sort of drops and that's it. And you go into the point of disuse where you can't play at all. Too much muscling through, too much it'll go away tomorrow. Not enough rest, but actually not enough uh, having it actually worked on. So if you're looking to get it worked on, the physical therapy modalities, manual techniques, gentle to moderate manual techniques, you're already beat up. You don't need to have some deep tissue massage where somebody is just driving their elbow through you. You know, it's not, that's not the kind of fix you want. You want to have it gentle, mild, moderate to get this thing going uh, and get the uh, blood supply back in, elongating the muscle, remember happy muscle, taking the tension off of the tendons. Uh, we use ultrasound, which is a deep heat, and it's totally painless, electrical stim, moist heat, postural exercises to understand how to sit better at the instrument. And then at the end, when the muscle is better, when it's healthy, then you can exercise it. Then you can get strong, but before that, you need to have the muscle relaxed and healthy. Again, I think everybody would agree with that. So, I mean, one of the things for posture, everybody can do this really quick. You can do it sitting or standing. Put your arms up like this, don't poke your neighbor in the eye, and uh, put your thumb back like this. And what it does is it opens up your chest and gets you to sit up straight because this forward posture is constant you know, ten tension on your neck is gravity's pulling down and it's causing all kinds of chronic irritation. So if you go like this, you're then in a straight up position and then you can approach the instrument. Uh, I had a penis today, uh, which helped him not sit at the piano this way, but sit it this way. He was able to actually see the keyboard and uh, was playing actually a much better than he was playing the opposite way. Um, muscle spasm, muscle pain. You have these trigger points that refer pain elsewhere to other places. You know, a lot of people complain of headaches. How many people here uh, have headaches more than once a week? How many have them once a day? Okay. Um, do you think they're sinus headaches? You know, anybody think they got sinus headaches? You do. Okay. Where are they located? Yeah, right here. That's because everybody sees sinuses here. There are a lot of TV advertisements that would lead you to believe that. You got one right now? Okay. Anybody have a headache at the moment? Yeah? Good. Right there. Okay. I'll get back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you have these muscles and they, they uh, refer to other places. Again, right where you were pointing, right over here on the side of the head. These are your clincher muscles. These are the things that allow you to chew and get your embouchure. These are the masseter muscles. These are also chewing muscles. Uh, just so you're aware that um, these two muscles together will allow you to clench between 8 and 1,200 pounds per square inch. Uh, that's how much power it is uh, in, in the clench. So these are the most powerful muscles of the body, and uh, they are overworked if you're a clencher or a bruxer. And also they get overworked when you, you're working your embouchure. So we have both of these. Now, would you mind coming down just for a quick second? The guy with the headaches? Oh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? I'm all right. What's your name? You got a headache. Let's sit down here. We'll see what we can do about that. Are you a clencher? Do you clench your teeth? Do you know? I don't know. Do you have Oh, this right now. Okay. Uh, and it's located over here? Yeah, it's located right here and right here. Right. Okay. Kind of like that pattern. See that? Yeah. Right there, like the one on the top mm -hmm. left. Okay. 
Now, pop your glasses off for a sec. Okay. Now, you say you're not a clincher, right? Or you don't know if you do. Okay. Now, I'm just palpating gently on his temporalis muscle. How's that hurt? Uh, it doesn't really hurt. By the way, what, what um, level of pain is it? You know, zero to ten. Zero is nothing. Ten is terrible. It's probably terrible. like a five or a six. Five or six. So that's significant, you know. Okay. Now, if I do this, what does that do um, for the pain? Kind of makes it go up. Increase? No, no, not increase. It like goes down, but it, it like moved. So it moved it. Okay. Did it change it in number? Um. Yeah, it probably went down by one or two. So, from a what a seven to a two? Um. No, no. It from like a seven to a five. Oh. Okay. How Sorry here? for your miscommunication. How about that? Um, it's about the same. About a five? Yeah. How about here? That, that helped a lot. Okay. <laughs> See, this is the masseter muscle, which also refers up there. What's it now? Uh, about the same, I think. What? Uh, five. Oh, wait, no, it went down, so maybe like a... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more like a three. A three? Yeah. Okay. I've got this stuff. It's ethyl chloride. It's an alcohol spray. It's cold. Okay, cool. Okay, and I'm going to spray it on the side of your head there, and we'll see if it makes a difference. I'm just going to cover your eye. Right, okay, just do. close your eye. It's chilly. Here it comes. Oh, yeah, it's cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like the glitter. Yeah, it's it cool. was Will Hagen. How is it now? I hate you. <laughs> uh, I guess, yeah, it's, it's an odd sensation. Yeah, what, no, what, what level is your um, pain? Probably uh, like a three still, but I should wait now. No, now it's, now it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it was, and then it moved quickly. Yeah, I rest my case. What this does is it actually uh, slows down the pain fibers, so the muscle spasm that was there is no longer felt. So it shows, it's, it's kind of like diagnostic in a way because you can actually tell what area is really causing the pain. And it's you know, incredible to him because he now sees that he doesn't really have to suffer with a headache, that if it can go away this easily, you know, why do I have this you know, continuing? Is that prescription? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's that professionals sucks. only, sorry. No, it's stay right there. So. More to be done. <laughs> So the idea is, now, does that hurt as much when I'm pushing? Not, not at all, really. Right. Because now the muscle has been quieted down. It feels softer to me. It was a little more tense. Now it's allowing me to just mush it around a little bit more. Because a warm muscle is a happy muscle. Even though I put cold on it, it relaxed it and took the pain away because it's, uh, it's calmed down. And it's gone back to its more elongated state. All right? Still gone? Yeah, it's gone. Dude, thank you. Thank you. So that's how simple muscle pain can be, but that's how problematic muscle pain can be. Anybody here had gotten a charley horse in their calf when they were asleep and it's got a, yeah, baby. Launches you right about. It's like somebody shot you from close range with a 45. And that's only muscle spasm, that's all it is. But that's how powerful it can be. Next, brass players, all your brass players. Um, I, I want you to understand that the embouchure, everybody, everybody thinks of the embouchure as this, the orbicularis oris muscle, that one right there. But that one can't do anything unless you have all these other muscles that attach to it to give it the shape, to give your tones the color that they have. Uh, and these muscles are used all the time and nobody ever even knows they exist. So if you are working a, a, a muscle like the orbicularis oris um, and all the facial muscles, you know, again, you have, to, you have to take care because this poor little lip right here has to contain all of that pressure that comes out of, uh, out of the mouth as you're trying to guide it into that little cup, to the little orifice there. Um, I've gotten together and uh, begun working with uh, David Federley, who's the principal uh, tubist for the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra, and a Dr. Craig Vanderkolk, 
And uh, we've put together this group called uh, Musicians Lip Service. And we become kind of the guys to go to for, uh, for lip uh, repair. And uh, all you brass players, I'm sure, uh, have met people or know people who have lip difficulties. And some of you have probably already had the unfortunate uh, situation of having some of those friends have to stop playing because of uh, you know, tearing or straining their lips. Uh, micro tears, all these things can happen. So you have to be very, very careful with the lips. Um, this gentleman, Denver Dill, everybody know him? Or anybody know him? He uh, is a trumpet player. He plays at West Point now, a PhD from Juilliard. He uh, blew his lip out and completely herniated it and had to have surgery. And, and he was the wunderkind and had to uh, repair and rehabilitate himself in order to uh, come back to full play. And he's now at West Point playing with the Hellcats. Um, but I recommend every brass player to get this cautionary tale and also great points on how to keep your lips strong and your embouchure healthy so that you don't have that problem. Uh, DenverDill.com. Um, so it's very important to uh, be careful with this. Um, another muscle in the neck, the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is like the granddaddy. You see it has pain everywhere, all over the head, across it. Uh, the back of the head, the top of the head. Uh, and the back of the neck also from the uh, posterior cervical muscles. And again, if you're in bad posture, kind of walking around like this, this mu these muscles get contracted all the time and they never get a break. And as we've learned, muscles need a break. So you have that. Does anybody have any neck problems here? Is there anybody with neck? Yeah? Yeah. Pardon me? Yeah, I have really bad neck You want to come down for a sec? Is that cool? Uh, hi. hi there. Hi. So tell me a little bit. What's going on? Well, I'm short. Um, You're short. That, that doesn't necessarily give you neck problems, though. No. Uh, basically, I play the piano, and I also read a lot because I'm looking down pretty much mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm looking down a lot, my neck. So your head weighs, you know, 10, 12, 14 pounds, and gravity's pulling down on it, and you're like this all the time. It makes your voice a lot bigger. But the idea, <laughs> the idea is that gravity is doing this, and you're you're trying to hold yourself up. So what happens is these neck muscles are getting overused all the time. Her, her poor neck never gets a break because of it. Plus you play piano, so you're playing this way, I guess, right? Yep. You don't sit upright and play this way? You... Well, I do sometimes, but whenever I'm like trying to figure out new songs or something, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to finger the right way, because right. I have really tiny hands, it doesn't mm -hmm. really work out too well. Yeah. Do you, do you have neck pain right now? Yeah. Yeah? What number would you give your neck pain? Like a six. A six out of ten, which is, again, over five, which is pretty significant. Is there, are you okay taking that jacket off? Thank you. Stay. All right, now turn your head to the right, okay? And turn it to the left. Okay, she does not have full range of motion. She has got like, you know, 65-ish degrees or something as opposed to getting more like 80 to 90 degrees because her neck muscles are tight and they're preventing her from rotating right or left fully. It's kind of like I've got her hair like that and telling her to turn to the left and she can't because I'm not letting her. So I'm just going to gently palpate. Do you get headaches too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how often do you get yours? Uh, about once a day. Hmm. See, way too many. I mean, headaches are unnecessary. You don't really have to live with them at all. It's just the muscles that are causing it, so we should undo that. Do um, you have one right now? Uh, sort of. What number? Yeah, that, that means like two. It's, it's just kind of there. And where's it located? Like in the back, kind of. In the back, okay. And people tend to just go, ah, I'll live with it, I'm used to it, it's normal for me to do this. And it really isn't normal. See, but you get used to all kinds of stuff that you really shouldn't get used to. Does that hurt? Yeah. See, and you can see I'm doing very little. Those that can see this angle. All the way down there. Mm -hmm. See, that's the sternocleidomastoid. Now, does it go anywhere? 
That just, Can you feel pain like going up your head or anywhere? It like goes down somehow. <laughs> okay, so you can do that too. Well, wherever it is, there. Oh wow, that hurts a lot. Where's that going? It it like I don't know. It went from like the edge of my neck to like and I don't know how to explain that. It just feels okay. down here. It just hurts. It just hurts. Okay, <laughs> sorry. And here? That one hurts in my head. That hurts in your head. See, she's feeling that here, back here. That's the, remember the referral spots in the back? Just, just like it says in the picture. Amazing. <laughs> How about there? In my back and my shoulders. Back in your shoulders. OK, so it's going all the way back to here. OK, um, now just what number, what number is it right now? Uh, like, did what I just did do anything one way or the other? No, it just kind of hurt more while you're doing it, yeah. not the same. So it's still a six-ish? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, if I do that, what does it do? It makes my throat feel funny. <laughs> <laughs> it um, doesn't do anything. Is that changing the pain? Okay, let me go here. What does that do? That feels kind of cool. <laughs> does it change the pain? No. <laughs> Here? Huh? That feels better. Yeah, feels better? The pain's better? Yeah, my mom's a massage therapist, and so it's like whenever she's working on tense muscles or whatever, and you kind of feel the pain gone away, that's what that feels like. Mm hmm. Minus the massage part. Yeah. Well, it's really, I'm subtly massaging it, actually. What's that doing? Feel better. Hmm? It feels better. If you want what, to keep rubbing her, right what, num <laughs> what number? About a five or a four now. Five or a four. See, just by a little bit of light hand pressure, we can change the pain levels, which shows you just how easily muscles listen if you talk to it. But it also shows you just how easily muscles will go the other way. They'll go to the dark side if you keep messing with it. You know, I talk to my muscles all the time, but they do not listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the talking I'm talking about is playing the piano with poor posture, standing around with poor posture, you know, telling it it's okay to shorten, it's okay not to be elongated, that kind of thing. That's talking to it, too. How's that? Oh, that kind of hurts really badly, actually. Yeah, and I'm not doing much. How about here? That's better. Is that less pain? Mm-hmm. What number? Um, I don't know, like the five. You go, ooh, she's really tight, too. <laughs> really tight. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> like a three. Like a three? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna spray with cold spray, okay? Kay. Back of the head. What is that doing? That feels a lot better. Huh? That feels a lot better. <laughs> what number is that? Uh, it's like a two now. It's almost okay. gone. So again, what we're finding here is these muscles, when you can take the discomfort away from them, the pain level drops. What's it now? It's pretty much gone. It's like a one, but it's still kind of there. Okay. But a one. Okay. So what we see here is, again, that it doesn't matter. Thank you. It doesn't. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter which muscle group we're talking about here. As long as you can quiet the muscles, Things, things are better overall. Upper trapezius, same thing. These are muscles that are used in playing virtually every instrument. Uh, levator scapula, this moves your shoulders up and down and you know, allows any of that movement for your arms. Between the shoulder blades, I'm sure a lot of people ha here have shoulder blade pain between the shoulder blades due to hunching over, playing with your playing sax, whether you're playing piano, drums, 
or because you're students, you're doing a lot of reading, you're doing a lot of computer work. Biceps, front of the arm, any, anybody that has to bend their arm doing any instrument at all, sax, you know, drums, whatever, and the repetitive overuse over and over and over. That's the kind of thing that gives you that. And it also gives you tendonitis right here because remember, the muscles are pulling, they're elongated, they're, they're yanking on the uh, tendons, causing inflammation and irritation. There's a muscle underneath of it, the brachioradialis, and that also causes uh, pain uh, in the arm all the way down even to the hand, which is why as a therapist, I can't just trust what you tell me, it hurts here. I've got to look in lots of other areas to make sure that they're quiet as well. Because just because you feel a pain here doesn't mean it's the source of the pain. It actually could be just the referred position from the pain. Triceps, percussionists, anybody that uses their arms is going to, again, uh, potentially have a triceps problem as well, which gives you elbow pain, triceps tendonitis. Probably have some people here who have that as well. And that's all three of them. Anybody got this kind of pain here? Arms, upper arms? No? Okay. And we'll move on to the forearm. Forearms are terrible. Forearms, I mean, they use your fingers. Uh, just to give you an idea of the forearms, in order to make a fist, you have to use the flexors and the extensors. In order to use your fingers, both of the sides have to get used. And in fact, everybody trying to do this, just bend your wrist and make a fist. It's pretty weak. There's not much going on here. But as you crank it up, you'll find that sweet spot to where your extensors and flexors are working in unison so that you have the powerful grip that you need. Um, and that is the way everybody uses their arms. And the problem is, is that this overuse, you, again, you get uh, not enough gas in the tank and you have irritation. We have a young lady here with forearm problems. Yes? Come on up. Now, to be honest, we've seen each other before. We saw each other yesterday. Um, and she's a great sax player, and she has forearm problems. Now, um, tell them a little bit about what the forearm problem was, um, your, your diagnoses. Right, I, uh, oh, gee, I forgot. You. Sorry about that. Hello. I got diagnosed with um, excessive mobility when I was younger, which means my joints move around more than they're supposed to. And um, I've been diagnosed with the carpal tunnel and advanced tendonitis. Yep. Now. Um, you know, even the carpal tunnel, potentially we can help with that too by relaxing the muscles and getting the strain off of down here and where the nerve comes through. But the excessive tendonitis is due to excessive muscle tension, which is pulled on the tendons. And when I saw her yesterday, she was in a fair amount of pain. By the time we got through, it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. How did it last? Um, it lasted until I started practicing way too long again, and mm -hmm. then it kind of came back. But. Didn't we talk about playing way too long? Maybe. Okay. How long? How long did you play? Two hours. Two hours straight. Yeah. Nonstop. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. See, and this is what happens when you play too long. Uh, you know. And okay. Why did you do that? I was cramming for a test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you didn't feel comfortable enough to take a break, right? No, it was kind of late at night, and I wanted to sleep. It was what? It was kind of late at night, and oh. I wanted to, oh, I to see. sleep afterwards. Okay. Um, well, that's a problem, too. But the, the point is, is that you, know, you want to try to get it so you feel comfortable enough where you can actually get it done in a lesser time and actually feel comfortable with what you're doing with the practice and not thinking you have to go for two hours in a row. Didn't you get kind of like tired and you know, brain dead after a while as well. A little bit. Yeah, so you're ending up doing something that's really not all that helpful either. Uh, best to do the 20, take a break, do some singing, take a break, do some playing, take a break. Um, so did, you, did it go back to square one again? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay, so this is a cautionary tale too where you don't want to keep doing that, where you keep irritating yourself because eventually one day your muscles are going to go, eh, I'm done, I'm toast. And you, don't, and you never know when that's going to happen. So you have to be careful. You have to you know, be cautious with what you're doing. This arm? Mm -hmm. Primary. Okay, so what pain level you got now? 
Like a seven or an eight, maybe. That's a lot of pain. And you're still functioning with it. For the most part. Yeah. And you're going to practice some more today? Yeah. Mm hmm <laughs> OK. Um, so remember the modalities I talked about, things you can do. You said we talked about the stretch, right? Uh -huh. The form. Did you do any of that? Uh, yeah, after I was in practicing. I did. You didn't do it while you were practicing, though? No. no. OK. OK. So it's a good idea to take breaks and actually try to help yourself and not do all this beating up because, you know, it's, it's too traumatic in my opinion. Probably yours too. But you did it anyway because you had to. All right. So it's a seven right now. So, ow, yeah. right? Yeah. So all the extensor muscles and also the flexor muscles. Is that right? They're all, which is more painful, the extensors or the? Uh, oh, that side. <laughs> the the uh, extensors, okay. All right, now when I feel this, it's, I, you, most of you can't see this, but it feels like somebody stuck a, a finger underneath of here. It's like this big ropey thing. I'm just, boom, just popping over, right? Ow, and it's, and it's, and it's not comfortable at all. So, if I, okay, it's a seven. Now, if I do this, what does it do to the pain? Anything? Not really. That kind of makes it a little worse. Same. Makes it a little better, actually. Okay. So you've got to find the sweet spot of where the source of it really is. It's not necessarily, again, where you think it is. What is that doing? A little better. A little better. Down to a? Uh, I don't know, like a five. See, she could use an arm strap, something that goes across here that does exactly what I'm doing now to kind of support it and to take the stress off it. So the muscle actually kind of stops here and rests it from here to here. Um, one of these Chopat uh, wrist um, tennis elbow uh, straps takes 50% or so off of from wherever this point is this way. So it's like somebody walking around with me holding onto their wrist and supporting it all day. And you should wear these things from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. Just showering, sleeping, and swimming is the only time you don't wear them. Uh, because this arm needs a rest all the time. If you think about it, every time she does anything with this hand, whether she's turning a key, whether she's holding onto a pencil, turning a doorknob, shaking a hand, doesn't matter. All these muscles are working. They're, they're never getting a break uh, during the day. Even holding on to the, to the microphone is a stress for these already overworked muscles. See, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is why I say it's a repetitive thing and it's a multifaceted thing. It's not just the one thing you're doing. If that was all you were doing, everything would be cool. But it's not. You're doing this and you're doing writing and you're doing typing and you're doing texting. So I recommend in the practice room when you're, you're taking your five or ten minute break, don't go on the computer, don't text, you know, give your arms a real rest. In fact, if you have a heating pad, bring it with you. Wrap it around your arm, wrap it around your neck, you know, give it that, that warm, uh, happy uh, feel while you're, while you're doing nothing, okay? And you shouldn't be doing anything much. You know, I wouldn't read a book, and if you read a book, don't hold on to it because, again, all these are stresses. How's it now? Feels better. Feels better. See, what I'm doing is I'm warming up the muscle, I'm relaxing it, getting more blood supply to it, so it's just, it's getting, you know, it's getting a little breather. What number is it? Like a four. A four, okay. You know, and, and um, you're going to do the stretches today? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. And you should do them every day, multiple times a day, not just, you know, once. I mean, if you think about it, you use your hand all day. It's not really fair. You know, you should do one stretch, you know, compared to all of the working that you're doing with these poor muscles. Because, you know, they, they can't stand this overuse for an extended period of time. And, um, you know, you're not playing a stringed instrument because if it was, it would be even worse. You know? And, and, you know, when you're playing, you've got to be careful about how hard you're pressing on the keys. You know, right. right? Try to press as light as possible just to close it. You don't need to put over pressure on it. Right? So break down your practice. Try to, uh, try to do whatever the activity you're doing as simply as possible. Um, can you possibly show us one of those stretches? Sure. I'm going to do that. Give me. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So what's it now? It's actually almost gone. It's nice. Okay. 
Okay, this is what happens when, you, when you're nice to a muscle. It, it does what it's supposed to do. It takes care of itself and it's quiet. Okay, and that's what you want. So, you know, try not to keep hurting it. If you find you're getting pain, remember it's one of the big red flags. Back off. Don't, don't attack it. Okay? Thank All right, you. thank you. Um, so, the stretch. Okay. Um, this is the postural. Uh, there's one for heads and necks, which is really great. Um, and, and I'll show you another quick thing, too. All right, she has a forearm problem. You can't massage yourself. If I'm doing this, working my forearm, what I'm going to end up doing is destroying this arm, trying to help this arm. Because it takes a lot of work, and I'm using all the muscles over here to help the one over here. Now I'm going to have to take this one and do this one, and it's insane. So what you do is try to find something that's firm but rounded, and just do that. It's a mechanical massage, and you can kind of like rotate your arm as you're doing it and get that part. You can do it here for this side. We'll do it on this side of the chair. Go inside and I can get the top of my arm. Again, rotating it around. If my thumb is bothering me, I can do it across here. I can come across here. It's a mechanical um, working of the muscle. You mechanically, you mechanically tr created it by doing this or this or this. So you have to mechanically extract it because as we know now, rest doesn't work. So you just do this. That's for this. Now, um, you, you can also take a rolling pin, stick it in here, go back and forth. Don't put a death grip on it with this hand, but just to roll back and forth across the muscles if there's nobody else to do it for you. For the hand, for the forearm, actually. Uh, you want to find a firm surface. Put the hand like this, spread it, take the other hand and cup it like a C to hold it down, and follow the fingers because it t takes angles uh, to stretch the muscle. Like I can go this way, following my thumb, and do that for five seconds. Then go to the first finger, then follow the second finger, then follow the ring finger. Then follow the pinky. Again, the art of stretching is to stay in it. Don't just jerk and don't bounce in and out of it. Just stay there and as it relaxes, you can lean in a little further. And that stretches all of the forearm muscles. Then you can turn around, put it this way, cup your hand again, and do exactly the same thing. Follow the thumb, first finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky. Okay, and you can do this multiple, multiple times a day. Again, no fear, you're using your hand all the time. So how many times can you, uh, can you stretch it? Lots, okay? Now for the neck and the shoulders. Take your hand, sit on it. You can do this standing or sitting. I'll show you standing in a second. Sit up nice and tall, take the other hand, put it over, grab your ear, and pull straight over. And hold it for five seconds or so, and then drop your, your chin just a titch. And what happens is you start getting a pull of the neck and shoulder muscles further down backward behind you. And then you drop a little bit more and hold, and drop a little bit more and hold, and drop a little bit more and hold. And again, six times, seven times, just to get it down there. And you'll feel the, st the stretching of the muscles go back further, further, further. And switch to the other side and do the same thing again. You can do this in the car. You can also do it. You can also do it um, in the shower or find any wall. Uh, all you got to do is put your shoulder against the wall, hold, and do the same exact thing. So this can be done before a performance, any time you want to do it. Um, again, if you do it in the shower, the shower's beating on it, nice hot water going on there, and then just lean against the wall, not the curtain. Um, so, uh, you know, the take home is, you know, keep things warm, happy, relaxed. Beware of this slippery slope. Don't, don't deny any one of these. They're all red flags. 
Uh, the, the tightness is the least of it, and that's the one you want to jump on right away. You know, your body should be transparent. You shouldn't really feel anything. You shouldn't feel your arms, you shouldn't feel their legs. They're there to do what they're doing. If you have a problem with something, it's going to show up, and you're going to be aware you have an ear or a foot or an ankle. So, um, any my contact number's on there, so you can uh, give me a call if you want. I'll be sticking around after for a few minutes to chat with people. So thank you very much for your time.